starting off our session called bring it home in this setup there's a central square surrounded by four smaller squares at each corner teams compete to transfer balls from the central square into their respective home squares as the whistle blows teams dive into action racing to move the balls into their home squares while keeping a vigilant eye on opponents trying to intercept the intensity rises as players strategize and maneuver aiming to secure their territory while disrupting their rivals plans with the clock ticking the competition heats up each team hustles to maximize their ball count in their home square before the time runs out it's a thrilling display of skill teamwork and quick thinking finally as the timer signals the end of the drill the results are tallied the team with the most balls safely tucked into their home square emerges victorious celebrated for their agility and strategic prowess Bring It Home says the stage for an engaging session filled with spirited competition and camaraderie, setting the tone for what's to come. The second drill called Trick or Treat. Picture a spacious rectangle marked by cones positioned on either side. Players line up on one end of the rectangle, each equipped with a ball. Their mission, to dribble the ball from one end to the other, where cones await each cone representing a delightful treat akin to those found during Halloween festivities. With the deft control, players navigate the course, snatching up a cone as they reach the opposite end. The thrill of the chase is palpable as they speed back to the starting point, eager to collect yet another treat before time runs out. This exhilarating drill continues for a duration of about one to two minutes, during which players aim to accumulate as many cones as possible. The challenge lies not only in dribbling with precision, but also in maximizing their haul of treats within the allotted time. As the final seconds tick away, anticipation mounts. Who will emerge victorious? clutching the most cones in hand. It's a test of skill, speed, and strategic decision-making, a Halloween-themed adventure that adds an extra dash of excitement to the training session. The third drill called Island Hopping, a drill designed to enhance players' ability to find open space while dribbling, all while adding an exciting pirate-themed twist to your soccer practice. After all, who can resist the allure of a pirate adventure? We're looking at you, coach. To set the stage, create a large square measuring 20 by 20 meters using cones. Within this space, designate smaller square islands in each corner using additional cones. Now it's time to appoint two brave volunteers as your pirates, while the rest of the players are armed with a ball each. The pirates take their place in the center while the other players choose their starting island. The objective, dribble from one island to another without falling prey to the pirates' swift tags. If a pirate manages to tag a player on route, fear not. Instead of walking the plank, the tagged player joins the ranks of the pirates. The game unfolds until all players have been tagged, at which point new pirates are selected and the adventure begins anew. Success in this drill hinges on players' speed, agility, and perceptiveness in identifying safe havens amidst the sea of obstacles. While some players may initially hesitate to leave the safety of their islands, encourage them to take calculated risks, albeit without undue pressure. Coaches should emphasize the importance of decision-making, urging players to trust their instincts in selecting their paths rather than blindly following the crowd. Above all, remind players to keep their heads up, scanning the field for opportunities to seize open islands swiftly. Remember the mantra, take chances, stay alert, and beware of lurking pirates on the high seas of soccer.